Howdy folks, Nathan coming at you from Denver, Colorado at the TFL Satellite Studio. It's my house. Yep, we're still doing this, baby. We are answering your emails and we have some great ones today and they all revolve around a theme. And that has to do with the fact that A, everybody at TFL Studios is tall and B, not everybody else on the planet is. And it's something that has been nagging at us, we just didn't realize it, for a long time. We're not considering you guys out there who are not over 6'1". I'm actually one of the shorter guys at the studios and I'm over 6'1". Roman is about 6'3 with the hair. Um, we got a guy named Grant who's like 6'6 and he works on our business side. I mean, there's some really tall people there. Tommy's over, he's taller than me. So, okay. The point is, is that there are a lot of people out there who aren't as tall. And there have been some questions about that and I wanted to answer a few of those. Now, I technically have three messages that came in to me. One from an email that went to TFL Truck. Another one that went to uh, my Twitter account, uh, Nathan Adlin, twitter.com. Um, and then a phone call. And the phone call was from my sister. <laughs> I know, right? Yep, I actually got siblings. And she is 5'2", and that's on a good day. She's a little tiny person. And she's had a really tough time getting comfortable or even getting into most vehicles. Now she drives a little crossover, and she was thinking about replacing it in the future with another crossover. And we're not gonna get into that vehicle today, but it inspired me to answer these emails as well. Especially because I've seen my sister, once again 5'2", who has a really hard time getting into and working with pickup trucks. And that's what this first question specifically deals with. So let's get right to it. Hello, my name is Evan and I have a question. What is a good truck for shorter people, new and old models? I'm five foot three. I do not intend, nor do I need a truck for work purposes. I would just like one as an appliance slash furniture hauler and to go onto light trails and snow with. Space is never really an issue with me but I would like other people to have room. I have noticed that the bed is tough for me to reach into, especially on new vehicles. The older models, early 2000s and older, are easier for me to get into. I think this is a question that needs to be answered. Love the show, thank you for your time. Once again, this is from Evan. This is a great question, and it's something that we have dealt with before. I have specifically dealt with it before, because once again, I have a very short sister. And I actually remember seeing her struggle like crazy, trying to get stuff in and out of a regular full-size pickup truck. And this was years ago. And even back then, I mean, I laughed because I'm a brother, but at the same time, it dawned on me, well, that really doesn't make it easy for people. And it's only gotten worse. A lot of you may have noticed that modern pickup trucks, especially half tons and heavy duties, have a really high rear end. And the reason they do is for both payload and for towing. That levels out when you put a heavy load in it or if you're towing and it helps with a few things. It helps stabilize the load. It helps actually increase the amount of load they can actually pull or haul. Unfortunately, it also means that when it's dry and there's nothing in it, it's a hell of a reach to get into. And that's a real problem. So. What to do about it? Well, modern pickup trucks, all of them, including mid-sized trucks, are very difficult to work with. Recently, I had a Ford Ranger that I was working with, and my sister would not be able, from the outside of the vehicle, to reach into and touch the bed. In fact, I don't think she could even reach up and over the bed. Definitely not on a half-ton truck, and absolutely not on a heavy-duty truck. No way. Not unless she jumped on the tire, or used one of those steps, and there's a variety of different steps that different automakers build that you can step on in order to reach into. But for the regular pickup truck owner who doesn't need a super heavy duty vehicle, like what Evan was talking about here, there aren't that many trucks that really qualify. Now, if you go back in time, you can get something like the older Toyota Tacomas that are going back to, let's say, 2006, 2005, 2004, those older ones sit a lot lower and their beds were a lot lower. Now I had a 2008 
and that truck was incredibly easy to reach into. The bed was very easy to work with, but the walls weren't very high. Part of the reason why a lot of these trucks have such high walls is because they'll have more volume and on paper, you know, having more is better, right? And frankly, being able to hold a bigger load is important. So if you don't need that big load, and if you don't need that type of towing capacity or hauling capacity, which forces automakers to jack up those rear ends or to get an expensive air suspension, what do you do? Well, I do have a truck that's brand new. It's not really a truck. It's basically a crossover with a bed. And I'm referring to the Honda Ridgeline. Now, I know a lot of you guys right now are picking up things and throwing them at the computer or your phone saying, ah, oh, that's not a truck, how dare you? You know what? It is a perfectly capable vehicle for those who really don't need the capacity of hauling 10,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds, whatever, or being able to hold more than 1,500 pounds. It's a very good inner city truck. It's a very good urban living truck. Yeah, okay, it's not a truck. It's a good vehicle for that type of utility. And here's the best part. The bed is exceedingly easy to access. It has a swing out door that also works like a regular tailgate. And when you swing it out, it doesn't matter if you're four foot 11, you'll be able to reach into the back. Also, you can reach up and over because on the sides of the bed, it's not that high. It's one of the lower vehicles out there. They didn't jack up the rear end five feet in the air. So it's easier to access. Also, once you open it up, you also have that really handy under bed storage compartment, which is fairly large. It's like a large trunk. A friend of ours years ago actually was able to hide inside of one of those things. He uh, allowed us to shoot his Honda Ridge line doing the I gauntlet. It's a long story, but it's out there on TFL truck. So not only is it a good vehicle in that respect, in terms of bed access, and it can tow about 5,000 pounds. I wouldn't recommend over 4,000. Honestly, I think it pushes it a little much, but it now has a new transmission. It seems to be a lot more compliant on the streets and more efficient. And here's the best part. The interior is remarkably comfortable. It's basically the same thing as a Honda Pilot which is a really easy vehicle to climb inside of, even if you're short. It was built for people of different heights. Whether you're five foot one or six foot four, you can be comfortable in the Honda Ridgeline and the back seats are comfortable. So that is the vehicle that I would recommend for you, judging on based on what you actually have written. I know there are other trucks out there that are, once again, more capable, more truck-like. You know, they can tow more, they can haul more, off-roading. But that's not what he's asking about. So that's why I answered with that. And I stand behind that too. I really do think for people who are, in his case, five foot three, this is an ideal vehicle. So the next question comes from uh, Carnegie. Hmm. And he is five foot four. <laughs> and this is an old question that's been sitting around for a while, um, but it kind of resurfaced and it's just timely. He wants to tow up to 3,000 pounds. He wants an off-road capable SUV that has the ability to compete with Jeep, but it's not a Jeep. <laughs> he underlines that. And he wants it to be a proper SUV that has comfortable seating for four or five and is rugged and dependable. Uh, no mention here of size or budget, but I'm going to guess that you do not want a full-size SUV. As such, you said you don't want it to be a Jeep, fair enough, and you want it to be rugged and reliable. All right, well, the answer is really simple. Right now, there's one truck I can think of that fits the bill, and yes, it's a truck, it's not a crossover, and that would be the Toyota 4Runner. Either the SR5 or the base model off-road package, unless, of course, you have a bigger budget. Uh, that vehicle can tow up to 5,000 pounds without much of a problem. I've towed over 4,000 pounds with one I think it was a 2017 and it had no problems. The newest one is basically just like the 2017 model. They're very similar. They haven't changed this damn thing in years, but it's reliable, it's rugged, it's capable. It's a smart buy altogether. In fact, the only thing it doesn't do well is efficiency. It's not that efficient of a vehicle, but in terms of off-road capability, in terms of towing capability, you'll have a hard time beating it. 
So those are the two suggestions I have, Honda and Toyota. Crazy, right? So one final thing uh, in, in regards to my sister who most likely won't be watching this video, but if she does, she'll be screaming and yelling that she really is five foot three. That's only when she wears heels. Um, she is somebody who could really use something like that Honda Ridgeline. That's right. It's one of those vehicles that really works for both sides. And the reason why it's remarkably easy to drive they seem to be fairly reliable and they're just good vehicles. Yeah, I really do wish that Honda was able to build them up and make them really off-road ready and all that, but how are you gonna do that with a basically a unit body vehicle that has a little subframe on it and independent four-wheel suspension? I don't know. But for those people who don't need the crazy capable hardcore off-roaders or the capable towers and haulers, yeah, might not be a bad idea. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really do enjoy doing these. And if you do have more questions, send them our way for the Fastlane Car, the Fastlane Trek, TFL Off Road, TFL Classics, and TFL Now. This is Nathan. I'll see you guys next time.